I wondered actually when I woke up yesterday morning if I dreamt the whole thing. It was surreal, wasn't it? The word that comes to mind is the one that Max kept using straight after the race. Insane. He used the word insane about three times to sum up his emotions. And that summed up the race. It summed up what he must have been feeling. And it summed up the season. I mean, I was there to the bitter end. Because you were there till the bitter end. We've had to record this week's show a little bit later because you had to fly back uh, later than planned. Actually, I quite liked the drama of being around when the, the stewards, they, was, they were going into the stewards and they were coming out the stewards and then all the press was still there. And I never get to see these guys normally because we all jet off <laughs> after the end of the race. And there's all these hardcore journalists, you know, the Fleet Street guys and the motorsport press who are there usually after every race and stay up all night writing well, their like pieces. Tom. And Tom, of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so there's, there's little old me and I'm getting in the melee and... Um, it was quite exciting. Welcome to the F1 Nation podcast, the last of the year, would you believe it? With Tom Clarkson, Damon Hill and Natalie Pink. Safety car is in this lap, Max. Mode one and strap one. This is it, mate. This is it. We're going to have one lap of racing to decide the championship in 2021. Down the inside, Hamilton sees him coming. It's a late lunch by Verstappen takes the lead of the race. Verstappen now snatches the championship trophy from Lewis Hamilton. They have shared a brilliant championship battle, but the championship can only be won by one, and it's going Dutch in 2021. Max Verstappen, for the first time ever, is champion of the world. Max Verstappen, you are the world champion. The world champion. Max, we are so proud of you. Oh my god, guys! <laughs> I love you so much! <laughs> you have driven like a champion all year. You deserve that. We needed a bit of luck. You got it. You made it happen. And we love you. We absolutely f- love you. It is now Tuesday morning here in the UK, and I am still struggling to process what happened on Sunday evening. Yeah. I'm with you, Tom. I, I really am. Honestly, we were put on the spot there because we were all getting up to leave. You know, the, Lewis had got a good lead and he was on his hard tyres and he was stretching away and he was going towards them. We thought we had to get down from the top of the McLaren motor where we were watching. We thought, well, we better get down to where the monitor is. And we got up and then, oops, Latifi hits the barrier. Oh, safety car. Oh, what's going on? And then, honestly, I mean, from that point onwards, we were really racing. Our minds were racing. Yes, so a lot to take in in a very short space of time suddenly. And such a marked difference through through the paddock, you know, this profound sense of disbelief and shock and this profound sense of pure joy and shock. (laughs) Everyone was shocked. First of all, do we think the right guy won the world championship? They, They were both the right guy. It could have gone to either of them and something was always going to it was like a, this brewing storm and it all it took was one tiny twist of a molecule and suddenly it snapped and it jumped one way and it jumped towards max on his soft tires with one lap to go there has been obviously a lot of reaction to say the least it had the world watching there was so much expectation and, and rightly so because it was such a tight title fight right down to the wire there is every reason to expect a thriller because the racing this year has been phenomenal. It's three abreast going into the turn nine hairpin. Oh, and there, Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton almost coming together. Hamilton has to go off the track. Lewis Hamilton in the lead, but will he have to give out the place? Yes, he can that back. Verstappen wants that place back, and he wants that place back right now. No overtake is exactly the same as the last. I mean, the one that... Max did on Lewis lap one, where he dove down the inside, took a massive long way, Danny Ricciardo style lunge from miles back. Now Lewis allowed that to happen, but of course he's he's got in his mind being taken out perhaps by by Max. So he's thinking, crikey, he's going for it. I'm going to have to slightly open the door. And and Max put his wheels right down there in his inside. Lewis took evasive action and had no track left to play with and had to take the escape road. That was a bold move, but it was a move that was 
has come on the back of a number of moves like that that have gone unpunished or let's say they've let it go. And so the drivers are unsure as to whether or not this is going to be the way to race or not. The doubt is the thing that has has given us all these difficulties. It's given us uncertainty. We've been saying all year though, isn't it? We just want clarity and consistency. What is the difference between that move? Because actually what it happened was he got away with it. He stopped the exactly. car before he went off the road. Lewis had to take the evasive action. But actually, when you look at that pass, it was a clean pass. It was actually, he was ahead. So I didn't understand why, when uh, Lewis got back on the track, why he didn't give the place back. Because in a sense, really, Max had got the place. <laughs> so it's like, it's, it's, and that's like, is that like any other overtake you've seen? But Damon, you've been in the stewards' room. That was deemed no further action. He didn't but- gain a lasting advantage on that one. That's what he said. But he kind of, he kind of did because he didn't get overtaken when in fact he had been overtaken. For me, I blame Tarmac Runoff. Monaco, we have no issues with how they race. A, because they can't overtake, but B, because the, they track, can't limits overtake. So, <laughs> the track limits are so defined. And that, you know, go back to Brazil turn four, if there'd been a gravel trap right on the edge of that corner, on the outside, that would have determined Couldn't how that more. what would have happened there. Uh, turn six, the incident you've just outlined in Abu Dhabi, if that had, got a, had a gravel trap, Lewis wouldn't have been going through the middle of that corner, would he? He would have had to back out and let Max through. So In Brazil, they both would have been in the gravel trap. That's what you're saying. In no, Brazil I'm not saying, four, I'm saying they, they would have got out of it. They wouldn't have put themselves in a position where they'd had to run away. Yeah. And ditto uh, turn six in Abu Dhabi. So, so bring in bring the diggers. Back, Dick, bring, and the, and the, the I'm going to exactly. take out shares in a, in a quarry, gravel quarry somewhere. <laughs> Somebody asked me whether it was fair, whether this ending of the season was fair. And I said, look, I don't know if fair um, could ever be applied to this, but I think it's fitting. And I think it's fitting because it is a microcosm, if you like, of the season as a whole. It, it couldn't really have ended any other way, could it? No, I think you're right. It, 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 fits, the, it fits the narrative of the season, doesn't it? Really does. For me, it wasn't about who won, and I know you can't um, you can't separate the two. But it was the way in which it ended. I'm saying was fitting. There was controversy, and there has been all season, and it's got everyone talking. And this water cooler effect will go on and on and on, and that's great for the sport. I felt utterly heartbroken for Lewis. I felt huge elation for Max. So people are saying to me, well, you know, how can you congratulate Max? Aren't you, you're not very patriotic. I'm like, no, no, no. I was utterly heartbroken for Lewis. But equally, Max was a worthy winner. We said it all season. It would be a shame for either to leave empty-handed because both of them are worthy winners. Max has driven so incredibly well this year. Ten wins, eight podiums. But then you think about Lewis and you think about some of his mighty drives, Brazil, for example, um, Qatar, you know, utterly dominant. You know, he's been exceptional. So Mm. it's impossible to separate the two. All I'm saying is that controversy (laughs) was always going to be the way this was decided, one way or the other. In other words, what you're saying is it was consistent all year. It was controversial all year. Yeah. <laughs> maintain that right through the end. And if it hadn't been a controversial ending, it would have been a bit of an anti-climax. But it, it, well, do you know what? It would have been a bit of a damp squib had it not yeah. finished some high drama. Because you'd have gone, oh, OK. Yeah, fair enough. That's Yeah, he's a worthy I, winner. I mean, Red Bull knew, didn't they? You could tell it all weekend. They knew they, they were going to get beaten by by Lewis and Mercedes. They just came here and they just they were kind of covering for themselves and saying, listen, we put up a good fight and we've really blah, blah, blah. And they kind of made it sound like they didn't know what they could what else they could do. And then this opportunity well, we the Mercedes was just so dominant, wasn't it, pace wise. They didn't have an answer to it. Yeah. Until Quali. And then suddenly yeah. it was like, hello, you know, they can pull something out. But then he then he fluffed the start. So he gave away that advantage right away. Yeah. yeah, but I think I think we should take our hats off to Red Bull in in as much as, however dominant that pace advantage has been for Mercedes, they have never been scared of trying something different. You know, always going on a very aggressive strategy, throwing caution to the wind. And some might say, well, you can do that when you're in second place. I really admire their approach to this. You know, all through the race. They were just trying anything. They were. And then ultimately, they did get that miracle that Christian was after. Yeah. Uh, one uh, one of my drivers of the day, 
Checo Perez. <laughs> the, oh, wow. Yeah. The way he kept Lewis at bay for, well, it was one lap in particular, wasn't it? And, yeah. and uh, brought Max back into the game. And I thought, actually, he drove very cleanly. He did. He didn't drive him off the track. He or... weaved a bit. There was a bit of weaving, but um, but no, I thought it was good. So it's interesting that you say that because I think Checo's a great driver, but I think that Bottas is, if you had to compare as teammates, Bottas has delivered week in, week out as a teammate for Lewis. Ah, really? I think he has. But Checo delivered when it mattered most. And as you say, probably just it was probably just that one lap, but one lap of 58. Hold that thought, Pinks. Here's a quick line from one of our sponsors. It may be the end of Formula One in 2021, but the holiday season is still in full swing. That means there are stockings to be stuffed. And luckily, our good friends at Manscaped are bursting with gift ideas, whether it's for your partner, your dad, your brother, your friends. Get them something useful that's almost sure to get a laugh. Gifts small enough to fit in a stocking, but big enough to change a man's life. Yes, I know about this. How about the Manscaped Signature Cologne or the Shears 2.0 Luxury 4-Piece Nail Kit? Or if you're feeling really mischievous, how about this? The Crop Mops Bull Wipes. Oh, yes, every man needs some of them. And don't forget, the ultimate gift at the top of every man's wish list this year is the best selling Performance Package 4.0. We've actually talked about this quite a lot on the pod this year. It's fantastic, and it includes a lawnmower body trimmer, the Weed Whacker ear and nose hair trimmer, a plethora of liquid formulations to maximize your hygiene routine, and Two free gifts. That's right. Manscaped will even throw in a pair of boxers and a travel bag to keep your kits safe. So you'll seem even more generous with your gift giving this year. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code F1Nation at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. And don't forget to use the code F1Nation. While the team bosses have um, been throwing stones at each other all year, one thing that has been consistent is the respect between Max and Lewis. Every race. Well, he, he called him an idiot once, didn't he, on the radio? I mean, well, and, and Lewis called him crazy. Yeah. Uh, you know, but but that's in the heat of battle. The heat I think. Of battle. Exactly. I think you can forgive Team Radio. Having said that, wasn't the final lap of Sunday the, the heat at the moment? I mean, Lewis is calm to conduct himself in the way that he did under the pressure that he was under was was nothing short of astonishing. No, I agree, Natalie. A massively impressive dignity in, in defeat. And I think in some ways that can also be a, a way of winning as well, because you have to accept that this is it's not an exact science our sport and sometimes it, it goes against you and you might feel aggrieved but everyone they gave their best and he and he recognized the greatness in max and max has acknowledged that it, it's also there in lewis and they're worthy they found their worthy opponent i always felt with with michael that he never thought i was a worthy opponent and then once i beat him in the wet and i think he was slightly impressed by that so i got i got the sense that well at least on this occasion he, he, you know, he came over and congratulated me after that race as well. So, you know, it, it's it's great when it happens like that. And let's get on to the next, let's have another bash next year and, uh, you know, put this behind us. Not let it fester. You know, it would be awful if it was a kind of festering uh, resentment, which sometimes happened with other drivers, like between Senna and Prost, it got very ugly and lasted for quite a while. Let's not forget that Max did have to overtake on the racetrack. Yes, he had the soft tyre and Lewis was on 30 lap old medium tyres, but he still had to get the job done. And yeah. I, I was quite surprised he did it where he did it into turn five. I thought he might have waited and tried to have a sort of clean slingshot past him, you know, along the straight. But no, he 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 wasn't hanging around. And you're right. You're right. It showed incredible nerve to do that. At that stage of the race, that stage of the season, you're, you're right. Still had to make it stick, and actually looked like Lewis was going to come back, didn't it? Yeah. Oh my goodness! And he got Lewis to go the wrong side, didn't he, on the way into turn nine, as well. There wasn't just wasn't quite enough room. Lewis had no option. He got the momentum. He couldn't go left, so he had to go right, and then he's in the wrong place. Three point two miles of racing action all the way to the checkered flag. Where can Verstappen try and get past Hamilton? 
braking zone is normally down in the turn five. Is Verstappen far enough back? He's going to make the lunge down the inside. Hamilton sees him coming. It's a late lunge by Verstappen, who takes the lead of the race. Verstappen now snatches the championship trophy from Lewis Hamilton, who's trying to fight back. No DRS for two laps, so Lewis Hamilton will not get the rear wing open. He's now got he's going to go down the outside. If Verstappen keeps it tight and neat, but he hasn't. He's gone a little bit wide. Here comes Lewis Hamilton, though, down the back straight. He's got a slipstream. He almost touches Verstappen. They almost make contact into turn nine. Verstappen stays ahead of Lewis Hamilton. Of all the drama, of all the controversy, of all the magic moments in Formula One in 2021, it comes down to this. How exciting was that last lap? <laughs> it was berserk. It was mad. And look, we're still, the world is still talking about it three days later. Bernie Eccleston, if he was still in charge, would have been loving it because he always believed any publicity is good publicity. And if that's the case, this is good for Formula One, isn't it? And we have a new world champion. As brilliant as Lewis is, I'm reminded of what David Coulthard said on the pod last week, which was he believed that having Max Verstappen as world champion was good for business good to have a new young guy leading yeah. us forward and I think Max will be a great world champion as well I agree I mean he, you know he's just got this steely nerve that I find so impressive and that he he takes so much in his stride given that he's still only 24 I mean he he acts much older than his years and yeah I mean we saw it as Zandvoort didn't we the pressure that he was under and he just took it all in his stride mm. and again I, and I, you know I'm sure he's still partying hard right now. He's, but... he's not, Pinks. He's testing. He's testing the 18-inch tyres in Abu Dhabi as we speak. I was really impressed that he, he turned up to do that. Can't get enough. Wow. Uh, getting back to what you were saying about his maturity. I mean, do you remember, Natalie, we interviewed him when he first was signed up to drive when he was yeah. 17 and we interviewed him. And I just couldn't believe I was talking to this 17-year-old who absolutely had an answer for everything. And so we're just completely confident that he was... You know, his view was correct. He had confidence in his own views and he had answers. Unbelievable. Yeah. Great champion. Uh, I remember my first interview with him and he said when he got his first podium, he promised his sister that he would buy her a handbag, design a handbag. And, uh, and sure enough, he did. And I remember her proudly walking through the paddock with this handbag because obviously it's something that she wanted, but also it represented so much. And this is something that's really struck me is what a team effort. And, you know, it's a team effort for the Hamiltons as well. You know, they really have pulled together. But I love the Verstappen camp and how much it matters to them all and the sacrifice they've all made. I don't know if you saw this, his sister's photo that she posted of the three of them, very young. Because there was a time when she wanted to compete. You know, there was talk about her becoming a female champion because she's a very talented girl. Um, but everything ultimately went into Max. And um, this is kind of the just reward for all of them at the end of that, that long road. I mean, I know he's only 24, but it's been a long time in the making for them. But for someone who said if he didn't win, it, it wouldn't matter. <laughs> he certainly looked very happy at the end, didn't he? And, yeah, uh, and as did... Yeah, I mean, I remember that that shot of Jos in um, qualifying in Saudi when Max hit the wall. Oh my God, the stress, the pressure. You know, the last week has been a long, long week, and for for everyone in comp- competition, it's just so sad that you can't. You have these two camps; they're both experiencing all the the pressure and all the same sim- similar kind of experiences: the victories, the defeats and the kind of rivalry and all that they're experiencing, but they can't share it together. Do you know what I mean? Maybe one day when the war is over, they'll uh, be able to have a cup of tea together. Well, will Toto and Christian kiss and make up? I don't think so. <laughs> I think I think <laughs> Christian made it abundantly clear in Qatar that uh, he wasn't going to do that. But I just can't believe... I think it's all... A, I think it's a front, actually. I think it's a front that they've put on. What, for Netflix? I don't, I don't. I think they're very different people who actually probably wouldn't really enjoy a beer together. I just think they're different people. They're both great, but they're very different. And it's the same with Max and Lewis. They don't dislike each other, but they would never sit down and have a natter and a bowl of pasta together. I just don't, I just, I just, yeah, I think we're talking about very different characters. And approaches to the same thing. And it's different ways to to skin a cat. Yeah. I hate that expression. 
No, it's horrible, isn't it? Is I don't know. Weird change, can we change that? Why do you to different ways that? to skin a rabbit. No. Oh, what am I saying? I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, different ways to it's different ways to peel a peach. <laughs> Should we talk about some other drivers? I mean, you know, were there any other when drivers? They all oh. in, oh, that's the thing. <laughs> Yuki, yeah, Yuki. Yuki, he came good, Nat. You were right all along. But when they flooded into the pen after the race. I didn't know any other positions other than one, two. And I was running around asking anyone, where else did everyone else come? No one knew. Lance Stroll came up to me and I said, Lance, I'm sorry, but where did you come? He said, I don't know. (laughs) Classic. I do know that Yuki Sonoda came fourth. Would you believe it? And Pinks, he out-qualified Pierre Gasly. I know. Just on fire all weekend. It was extraordinary. Basically, basically, he has started and finished the season brilliantly. Just forget about the bit in the middle. (laughs) Although he's been in Q3, what was it? Six of the last seven races. So it really has started to ramp up for him. It it was actually a similar pattern in Formula 2 for him. He had a very slow start there and then got better and better. And that appears to be... The case for him in Formula One as well. Yeah, I credit Alex Albon with it. It's all it's all down to Alex, his mentor. But funny you should say that, but it does sort of coincide when Alex with when Alex um started coaching him. But I want to praise Honda and get angry with Honda at the same time. Praise them for doing such an amazing job this year and for giving Red Bull and Alpha Tauri a power unit that was near enough as damn it as good as the Mercedes, gave us a great championship. And I want to get angry with them for leaving Formula One. I just don't understand it. They've got it all made. They've got a brilliant young driver in Yuki who's coming good and is going to hopefully have a great season next year. They could really make hay with what they're doing now, but Red Bull are going to get all the benefit, really, because Red Bull Powertrains comes in next year. They're going to pick up the baton and run with it. And and I feel sorry for Honda, but I'm angry with them as well because also they give us such international flavour and it's it's just fantastic having them around. So I'm going to miss them a lot. Yeah, I was going to think it's a bit like Nico Rosberg. They've just, you know, shock horror. They've left just as they win again. But in many ways, it could be the best way to leave, you know, actually winning the championship. Otherwise, it's just more, more hard work and... <laughs> <laughs> just more of the same <laughs> I, do, I do remember saying to Nico why did you leave when you did he said well I summited my Everest you know that there was no better place mm. no better time to leave the sport and you kind of have to respect that but then I'm sure that the racer and the sportsman the competitor in all of us says well don't you want a bit more of the same you've had the taste of success now Surely that's addictive. And there's some some who will say it's the it's the cha- it's the journey, it's the fight, it's the continual struggle. Not the ending is sometimes can be a bit of a a, a, you know, a a letdown because you suddenly find yourself. Oh, now what do I do? You know, you need it again. You need to go back again. Um, but Honda, yeah, I mean, well done, Honda. What an astonishing achievement. And sorry to see you go. But anyway, look before we jump to Yuki because obviously. You know, Pink's president and CEO of the Yuki Sonoda fan club. But we have jumped ahead of Carlos Sainz, who finished P3 on Sunday. He's now, what is he, fifth in the world championship, two places ahead of Charles Leclerc in his first season at Ferrari. I think that's pretty darn impressive, actually. Yeah. And do you know what he said in the pen? There you go. There's another podium that we're just going to go unnoticed. And I said, oh, we've noticed, we've noticed. But that was that was really impressive. And actually, equipped with the right car, you never know, he could be a title contender next year. Well, you know that when Carlos uh, was Max's teammate at Toro Rosso back in 2015, yeah. their first season, I think in qualifying, they were only, they were separated on average over the whole season by less than a tenth of a second. I'm sure... Max has improved a lot and I think his qualifying this year has been stunning. But sure, Carlos will have improved as well. And it's weird. I sometimes think he doesn't get the credit he deserves, Carlos Sainz. And I don't really know why, um, because he's done a fantastic job this year. He's a grower, isn't he? I thought that um, uh, that they, they, they were saying that he's learned a lot. That's what the the thing about Carlos is. He's he's got talent, he's got ability, and everything. But he's very. I think he's quite smart. And um, I do have an apology to make to him because I was going to 
to see if I could get a game of golf in on Sunday morning. So I texted who I thought was his dad uh, about 11 o'clock at night saying, what time are you teeing off? And I got a reply from young Carlos and uh, saying, it's me, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm so, so, sorry about that. So I claimed I've claimed success now. I've I said right, I'm going to phone you uh, the night before every race now, and uh, about eleven o'clock because <laughs> it seemed to work. You'll, you'll get a podium every time. <laughs> but uh, no, he did, he's done a good job. He's a nice lad and um, good golfer. I do think that he gets the praise that he deserves. It's just there's so much else going on. I feel that that's the truth of our sport. There are so many subplots. There are so many heroes. There's so many stories to consider. And sometimes good guys like Carlos um, get lost in the melee. But when you talk about the next generation coming through, I think a lot of people would say Max Verstappen, Charles Leclerc, George Russell, Lando Norris. Carlos needs to be in that group, but I'm not convinced everybody puts him there. Yeah, but maybe he's maybe maybe we think he's older than he is. But, you know, he is still a young gun. We've seen some fantastic teamwork on the grid this year and look forward to seeing how the likes of Valtteri Bottas and George Russell get on in their new colours next season. And when it comes to Formula One, we all know that teamwork is absolutely vital. You want the best people around you and working alongside you. And business is no different. So here's a message to all budding entrepreneurs out there. LinkedIn Jobs is the best way to find your new teammate if you're a small business owner, helping you to interview the right candidates for the job quicker than ever. And it's free. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can tap into the world's largest professional network of more than 30 million people and posting a job takes just a matter of minutes. It's filled with useful tools and resources so you can tailor it to your needs to help you filter and prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. And that's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. They are in pole position. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster and you can post a job for free. Just visit linkedin.com slash F1 Nation. Again, that's linkedin.com slash F1 Nation to post a job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Going back to the order, uh, your man, Pink's Yuki, was fourth. Pierre Gasly, fifth. Another guy sort of maybe doesn't get the credit. He's, d d does anyone in Formula One get the credit they deserve? I mean, Pierre Gasly has had a brilliant season, finished ninth in the championship, got a podium back in Baku. Yeah. Hugely consistent. I think people have definitely thought he's been a class act this year, and if, and if he wasn't already. But you're right, you know, you put them in a, a little box with the guys who are really good but the difference between those guys and the Lewis's and the Max's is they are stellar good you know when they arrive they just blow everyone's minds and mm. you know and, and you can you can grow into a you know great driver and you get you need an opportunity of course but um, I mean don't forget Nigel took took years and years to become world champion but you know I think the they the, that's the level, it's a measure of the level of talent we have in F1 at the moment through the yeah. field. They're just astonishingly good, accomplished and fast. And they just need a crack at the front to find out what they've really got, to find out, you know, whether they can take this humongous championship, let's say the championship battle we've just seen, whether they could sustain that for an entire season. And that's really the difference between good guys and really good guys. You could argue Pierre Gasly's had that opportunity couple of years ago yes you could mm. yeah yeah and that's and that's exactly the same opportunity that max had and it just didn't go his way but then he was in the same team as max at the time so and i suppose the sign of a true great is being able to jump into any car and any team and make it work for you yeah oh, hey pinks you're bang on and let's just cast our minds back to spain 2016 max verstappen's first race in a red bull yeah he wins it yeah he wins it. He beats the established man, Daniel Ricciardo, who Christian Horner, in fact, talked about it last week on the pod, didn't he? Saying Daniel was on the better strategy. And even today, they're still scratching their heads trying to work out how Max actually won that race. Just a bit of genius behind the wheel. Yeah, I think that's what I'm that's that's sort of what I'm saying. They do they do freaky things that you just 
can't believe can happen and and, and the other guys have got the odd thing there going for them but let's say Carlos Sainz was a full second a lap quicker than than Charles Leclerc then you've then you've got a clear answer but it's quite tight between them and that gives us a problem because we don't know which one to choose do you see what I mean we don't know which one I think Ferrari are very much they've got a fantastic driver in Carlos because I think he understands a bit more perhaps about how to develop the car and I think it could be really, really useful to Ferrari. I think Charles is a little bit more a uh, fast driver. I might be wrong, but I mean, he's he's also very, very good in opportunist situations in races, Charles. But um, look, they're all really good. Valtteri Bottas, sixth on Sunday. Wasn't a barnstorming race for his last one, was it? What happened? Last one with Mercedes. <laughs> oh, dear. You know, there was Checo holding up Lewis Hamilton to help his teammate. Uh, I felt Valtteri was slightly missing in action at the weekend. Yeah, he sort of went able, didn't he? I've got notes here. Great job on the mediums. I mean, <laughs> that's all I've, about all I've got next to his name. I know, and it's a bit of a shame, isn't it, to go out um, of your career with Mercedes on that performance, but you know, there was so much else going on. Lando Norris, I really thought, was going to have a, a great race on Sunday, and it's all sorts of problems for him, wide at the start, technical problems, and a slow puncher. You know, he had gear issues, and uh, but that slow puncher at the end there just sort of put pay to any performance. So that was a shame. But Pinks, where did that qualifying lap come from for Lando Norris? P3. I don't think he knows. Honestly, he was as surprised as anyone. But did you hear the roar from the crowd? I mean, talk about star and, uh, and one of the future. He's so popular. You know, there was cheers for Lewis. There was cheers for Max. And there was a roar for Lando. Yeah. Funny enough, I was at dinner last night and there was a guy there who was at school with Lando and he said he was always an interesting chap just sort of wandering around quite nerdy with a glass of milk and he said but I remember thinking he's kind of special he's got something this kid (laughs) (laughs) and sure enough here we are witnessing it in real time and I think that's why he's popular because he's authentic and he's just a bit different and he is a bit quirky um, but he's a great racer, isn't he? And then just to round out the top 10, Alonso in eighth, Ocon in ninth, and Leclerc rounding out the top 10 in 10th place. Pitting under the safety car didn't really work for him. So a bit of a disappointing race to end on. Obviously, they all want to end the season on a high. Daniel Ricciardo outside of the points. Schumacher quite pleased with his performance in 14th. Uh, Perez, after that, that epic fight with Hamilton, didn't even finish the race. That's weird. You don't remember that, do you? No, what happened? He, he had some Honda prom, did he? Or was it? Do you just it? parked up? My work is done. I don't think he knows either. <laughs> well, it's the end of the season. It's been a hell of a ride, isn't it? Those 22 races. 39 episodes of this with you guys. It's been a wild ride. Oh my God, Tom. You've been in the thick of it this year, haven't you? those press conferences you mentioned the press conferences there was a funny moment at the weekend where prior to having Max and Lewis together on Thursday there was the big discussion about do we go for the cheesy handshake shot Uh, which I think you and Schumacher did a few times didn't you yeah because Bernie made us do it so so are we going to go for the cheesy handshake shot because that's what all the newspapers will want anyway Max arrives early sits down and we're just having a chat About three minutes later, Lewis walks in, walks straight over, fist bumps him and goes, how you doing, man? And they have a bit of a chat. So I thought, brilliant. That is the shot. I don't need to worry about this cheesy handshake thing anymore. And we had a Netflix camera in there. We had the two cameras that we have in the press conference room anyway. There was even a photographer in there as well. So the press conference happens and they have a good natter. And then at the end, I said to the Netflix guy, I said, oh, you must have enjoyed the, uh, the fist pump. And he goes, oh, I missed it, mate. I missed it. And I said, you missed it? And he said, yeah, yeah, I was focusing on Lewis and I didn't. And by the time I'd seen what was happening, I'd missed it. Oh, okay. So I then turned to the the, the camera guy uh, for FOM and uh, I said, did you get it? And he said, no, mate, we still had the slate up prior to the start of the press conference. So I then went to the photographer. Did you get it? And he went, "Uh, no, mate, sorry, I didn't get it. I had the wrong lens on. So no one knows about this fist bump except for me and the people in about three others in the room we'll just have to take your word for it (laughs) yes it's exclusive look that wasn't a highlight of the season for me but i think we should talk about our highlights 
I'm going to start and say my highlight of the year was the Hungarian Grand Prix, those 10 laps when we saw Alonso keeping Lewis Hamilton behind him. Just awesome defensive driving. And then to have Ocon winning his first race, to see Sebastian Vettel back up on the podium again. And then Lewis, do you remember he was exhausted after the race as well? He was in P3. That was my highlight. That whole, I love Hungary anyway. Uh, And then just that race had it all. Gosh. Can we have two? You can have as many as you want. Can we have two? Okay. You're a world champion. You can do what you like. Right. So the highlight for me was watching these two guys at the front at the sharp end. And I'm sorry if I've not included all the other drivers, but Max Verstappen's lap in Saudi was absolutely awe-inspiring and sadly ended with a hitting the wall. But it was just one of those messages that you get and you kind of, everyone will be remembering that. And the race was interesting. But also Lewis's drive in Brazil was as I said at the time, one of the most phenomenal drives I think I've ever seen. He, he, you know, you talk about grace under pressure. He'd had everything thrown at him. He got sent to the back and he basically won a one and a half Grand Prix on consecutive days. It was great to see that. Now I'm not a world champ, but can I have three? (laughs) Okay. I'm going to come back in and have another one in a minute. I love seeing a driver win their home race because I just love the buzz. So I loved seeing Lewis win at Silverstone. I loved seeing Max win at Zandvoort. It was just such a brilliant atmosphere in both places. And I know you're not supposed to have favourites, but let's face it, we all do. So I loved Daniel winning in Italy. Oh, yeah. That for me was just so precious. And to see and to know everything that he's been through this year and to take that victory was just a very, very special moment. But there hasn't been a dull Grand Prix this year. Every single one. Right back to Bahrain. First Grand Prix of the year. We saw the two of them going hammer and tongs. And we knew then, didn't we, at the first race, that we had a a proper championship on our hands. And it hasn't, you know, then, then you go to Imola, first corner, they almost have each other off. And then, of course, Bottas and Russell have their thing. I mean, we could go on and on. We could just find incident and excitement in every race this year. It's been it's been quite a, st- a stunning season. I yeah, can't think really of a better has. one. I can't, really and I'm being genuine, I can't think of a better one, certainly in the time that I've been doing it. And all the while punctuated by lovely chats with you two, just to kind of get your head around and make sense of it all. So thank you both so very much. Thank you, Natalie. Thanks, Nats. And thanks to you, Damon. It's been lovely talking to you too, Tom. And also hearing from our listeners and their questions as well, which have been fun too. Um, Now, I have to run to Hello Kitty World um, because I'm now back firmly in my role as a mummy. So if you'll excuse me. Oh, just before I go, my other favourite moment when when Damon called Carla Signs a Grower. Good. (laughs) I did, I? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> oh, Did you not see me giggle? No. So they, that's my innocence coming out. I have no idea what you're talking about, Natalie. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> it's probably time for us to go. We could call it do a Kimi Raikkonen, really. We're all going. We're all going. And good luck, Kimi. And thanks for everything that you've given to a Formula One. And uh, it's... I don't know. Well, he's going to get a career in politics or something like that, isn't he? Because he's so good with words. Or I, I don't know where he's going, but good, good luck. Yeah, I know where he's going. He's going to the Maldives. He's in the Maldives. Oh, lovely, lovely. Where it's not not cold, freezing cold and dark like it is in in Finland. But um, uh, you know, we've we've got to we've got to go too because it's Christmas coming. We've got right up to Christmas. It's n- nearly the New Year. We've got next year to think about. But in the meantime, have a lovely Christmas, Tom and Natalie. It's been an absolute pleasure. And let's, um, no pressure, but let's do it all again next year. Love to. F1 Nation podcast is produced by Formula One. In association with Audio Boom Studios. Thanks for listening, everybody. See you in the new year. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.